Welcome back to Cowlitz River Restoration. This is Sarah and behold, one of the biggest projects that I have ever done, this claw foot dresser. So first I'm gonna begin by taking off all the hardware and taking out all the drawers because this thing is gonna to need to be completely stripped. Also, the drawers were totally warped. I couldn't get one of them out. One of, watch me struggle. It would not come out. My husband came home from work and got all the drawers out for me. Then the most bizarre thing happened. The black paint just peeled off. Like, watch this. Do you see? It's coming off like those face masks that you can buy for blackheads. You let sit and then you peel it off. It's coming off like a peel. And it was just horrendous to work with. So I peeled off as much of the black paint as humanly possible. It was pretty time consuming. Once I got all of the black tar off, I tried to sand it. I tried with a 120 grit and it was fruitless. Uh, so I tried to sand it a little bit and then I was like, yeah, this isn't working. I'm gonna need to completely strip this. It did work for the drawers because the drawers didn't have the white paint under it. So I just pulled off the black paint and I sanded down all the drawers. I started off with my triangle sander, then I went to my circle sander because it's just a little more aggressive. I had a couple of strippers on hand, not a lot, but I figured I'd use what I had first. So I put on this bare stripper just all over as much as I could and then I ran out of it and threw that away. So then I used this spray that I had. I honestly don't even know where I got it from, but it was that citrus stripper spray. I put on that on and it just didn't quite do the trick. So my husband went to the store and got me some more stripper and then I lathered, slathered that all over the entire thing. You want a nice thick layer because you don't want it getting dry. It needs to be thick and you just put it all over everywhere that has paint. So that's what I did. And I just used an old brush that I had around. I think it had um, synthetic bristles and I just used a metal bowl that I had on hand and I just put that stripper all over. Once it had sat for a few hours, I used a couple of plastic putty spatulas to scrape the paint off. And I'll tell you what, that was super time consuming. So I did a little bit throughout the day and then came back to it that evening. There was a lot of scraping. The outside paint came off pretty good. The inside of the drawers was harder to scrape, but I'll show you that in a little bit. My husband did come out and you'll see that we both kind of went at the whole scraping business because it was taking a while. There was a lot of paint between that black paint and that white paint and getting that off. So I got as much off as I could and then I used mineral spirits on a, it's not sandpaper, it's, um, and it's not steel wool, but it's a really aggressive spongy material. I don't even know the exact name of it. I'll have to look it up. But I used that to get off the remaining, as much of the remaining paint as I possibly could. It worked really good inside of the drawers getting that excess paint off. And then I used that all over the outside. That mineral spirits also works to deactivate the stripper so that I can then sand the project. What's cool is my husband again came out and helped me out with that. When you're using mineral spirits, be sure that you're using chemical safe gloves because the mineral spirits will eat right through it. I tried to sand it with a 220 grit. It just completely gum gummed up my sandpaper. So then I went back over it with a 150 and that worked a lot better. I went over it as much as I could with my 150 and my round sander. Then I went back over it with a 220 grit and my triangle sander. I also used a couple of square sanding cubes. And my husband again came out and started helping me with the sanding. We also used a knife to try to get the paint out of some of the little crevices. And then I sanded down all the drawers with a 220 grit to really make sure that they were soft and ready for me to apply stain. Then of course, you're gonna wanna clean that up. So I vacuumed it and then I also wiped it all down to make sure that you've got all that debris off. 
you need it to be a smooth surface for when you go to your next step. So I put it onto some cardboard because I need it to be a safe space for my rug and I use tack cloth to clean off any extra debris on this dresser. Some of my drawers wound up being too big to fit into their space. So my husband actually helped me to cut part of those drawers. I don't have that on film because he did it while I was gone. I am staining the entire shell and I'll also stain the front of all the drawers with an English chestnut stain. I use the pour and wipe. I also use the dip and wipe method. I'm just using an old rag or a t-shirt that I cut into strips to apply this. And I always, always, always wear gloves and crack a window. There are a lot of nooks and crannies on this dresser, so it was incredibly time consuming working all that stain in. And honestly, even once I got the drawers cut down and sanded and ready to go in, getting those stained, it was, this is probably one of the most time consuming pieces that I've done, but man, is it worth it. It's really nice, it's solid wood, and it turns out really nice. So again, I'm just wiping this on, wiping this on. And once I have it all completely covered in stain, I can go on to my next step. The stain doesn't have to be completely dry for me to go on to my next step because with the gray washing or the dry brushing, I kind of want the colors to marry each other. So they're, it's okay for them to smear together and blend. And with my dry brushing, I used a super affordable chip brush that I just got down at the local hardware store and I just wet my bristles just a little bit and then brush it on and use a rag to wipe it off. So it's brush and wipe and brush and wipe all over the place. Um, I always like to work with the wood grain um, because it makes it look more natural. And I did end up using two different colors for my dry brushing to give it this weathered wood look. So this color is Aged Gray by Rust-Oleum in chalk paint. And as you can see, I'm just dry brushing that all over. The next color that I will use will be a linen white. And you will see that. When I do my Aged Gray, I do it a little bit heavier not real heavy because I still want to see that wood showing through. Little tip when you're working with dressers, you want to stain or paint the inside of where the drawers sit just a little bit, just in case the drawer nests inside of the groove a little bit so that it still looks completely finished. I've made the mistake before of not painting that inside and then had to go back and paint it. So here I am doing my whitewash and so lightly, I can't stress this enough, so lightly, I am just barely wetting my bristles and just running the paintbrush across the top lightly. And then I'm wiping it with my rag to just marry those together. And sometimes I wipe a little bit more to blend it more and sometimes I wipe it a little less to give it a couple of streaks. It really truly is 100% up to your eye and what looks good to you. It's one of those things that you just kind of keep working it in until it looks right. There's no rhyme or reason. It's just going with it and you just keep working it in. That's it. Uh, sometimes I'll do it and then I'll step back and kind of squint at it and look at it and then I will add a couple more streaks or I won't or I'll wipe it a little more. It truly is just whatever looks good to your eye. Little tip, sometimes I like to have my rag a little damp, not wet damp. I had it damp when I used my gray and I had it more, it was drier when I used my white because it gives it a different look depending on your rag condition. So I used a metallic silver paint by Rust-Oleum. 
and painted all the hardware. Then I had to sand down all the drawers. Some of the drawers I had to sand so that they would fit in because they were just a little too big to fit in, but not big enough that we wanted to cut them. So I got them all so that they fit. Here's a little tip. Once you put all your drawers in and they're stuck, you take two screws and you stick them into the holes and you can pull the drawers out so you don't have to sit and try to pry it and don't panic. Okay, then again, I'm gonna use my English chestnut on the drawer faces. Along the sides, you've gotta be really careful because I didn't want my stain to get on the side of the drawer. I wanted the side of the drawer to be pretty clean and stay the light wood. So on the sides, I had to be really careful not to have that stain run over onto the rest of the drawer. And again, it's just the dip and wipe method. Uh, when I stained, I also stained the inside or the top of the drawer. So the part that would sit inside, I still stain that part because sometimes you can still sort of see that part. Then just like the outside, I'm going to use a aged gray to do a dry brush technique on the faces of all these drawers. Same rules apply, that there are no rules. My only rule is that I go with the wood grain. I go in the same direction as the wood grain and I just wipe and smear, wipe and smear. Um, push all the drawers in, look and see how it looks to my eye and then add a couple more smears and wipes and keep on trucking. So once I have the gray all completely on there on every single drawer, I'm gonna do my whitewash with my linen white still using the same colors. But again, with my whitewash, I go a little bit lighter. Okay, well, and also the white goes on a little more stark, so you have to be more mindful of how much you're putting on and how it's going to look. You have to be a little more careful with how much you're putting on so that you don't have just a big white blob. So it's just wiping and smearing, Chalk paint's cool and the fact that it's pretty forgiving. So if I really needed to lighten it up, I could go get a wet rag and wipe it down and get most of it off. I need to put a second coat on my knobs. So I flipped all the handles down and then put more silver spray on. I like to wear a glove to protect my hand. The bottom drawers had this horrendous drawer liner in it. So I went ahead and cut a new drawer liner for each one of them. I just use the bottom of the drawer to measure my drawer liner and these drawer liners have these little uh, lines on it so it makes it super easy to cut it out and then I just fit it over the top. I sanded it down to get it as flat as I could and then I put these drawer liners in and it made it look so much cleaner. I'm so happy with it. And that is how the bottom drawers look now. I'm so excited to be at this stage. Men wax, finishing wax is great and it was perfect for this project. I'm really happy with the durability of it. It's so easy to apply. I just use a big wax brush and I put that men wax all over. I started doing the front of it with all the drawers closed and then once I have the whole thing waxed and sealed in the front, I did go back over and pull all the drawers out so that I could go along the inside or the inside edges of the drawer so that it's all completely sealed. This wax is super easy to work with. I just get a little bit on my bristles and then wipe it on. Sometimes I'll do kind of a swirling motion and then I'll do a back and forth motion in the direction of the wood grain. I like, I like to follow the wood grain. I just like the way the finish goes a lot better. So just working that in. Uh, the top, the sides, the drawers, all over. Everywhere you refinish, you're gonna wanna put that wax. Then we are at the best stage where you get to put on all the hardware or I get to put on all the hardware rather. So all that silver hardware is going on. I used my hand screwdriver at first and I was like, yeah, no way. And pulled out the electric drill because you know why. So this was it before and this is it after. It was so cool to work on this piece and get to transform it the way that I did. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for my next project. See you next time. Bye.